products with variations, like a shirt with different sizes or colors, or maybe a coffee that you sell in multiple sizes. The first step is to add the product that houses all of our variations. So in this case, we'll add a shirt product. We'll add it to a category retail, and create that new product category there. We'll give it a price of $10. Choose our tax and then add the product. So you'll see first and foremost that this product has been added to the transaction list here. Next, we'll go into this product, go to the variance tab at the top here, and add in attributes. Now, attributes are groups of variations. For example, size, and we'll add that one there, or maybe even color, and we'll add that one in, and we'll save this template. Now, as we save a template, a very special thing happens to this product. When we go back to our product list, you'll see that this shirt has this new logo on the left-hand side, which is a variant logo, telling you that this product is actually a variant template now as opposed to a standard product. We'll go to the point of sale at the end of this guide and show you how this actually translates to the selling screen. But for now, we'll create all of our different variants. So we sell red and blue shirts in size 8, 10, and 12. When you go into the product, you have information here, and then the variants tab remains. I'll add a new variant, so the color is blue, the size is 8, and I'll add that variant. The color is blue, the size is 10, and I'll add that variant to here. And then our last blue shirt is 12, and I'll add that variant. Now red shirts were popular last year, so we'll have our red shirts a little bit more expensive, size 8. Red, you can autofill, size 10, and then red, size 12. Now when we go back to our product list, we'll see that these variants are housed underneath their template. This is for a very important reason that we'll see when we go to the point of sale. But underneath our shirt, we can see we've got six variations. We've got shirt blue 10, shirt blue 12, shirt blue 8, so on and so forth. Now you can change any of these product prices or names as if they were standard products within Counter. You can also go into the products individually and add photos, barcoding, descriptions, tags, um, however you'd like as these are standalone products in their own right. Now if we go to the point of sale, we'll see how this translates onto the point of sale. So far we have one category, which is retail. We have our variant product in that category and all of the variations underneath. So you can see here we have our shirt category with this little V in the bottom here. If we click on shirt, we'll be presented with all of our variant options. Now on the point of sale, you can also jump in to your preferences section and arrange items and rearrange these how you'd like and also click on them to change their color. There's a guide that goes into more detail about this process as well. And that's a quick end-to-end -end guide on creating products with variants.